I'd like to uh, address a question that I've seen uh, uh, posted on a LinkedIn Scrum Practitioners group. Uh, it's not specific to Scrum, although it could seem like it. Um, here's the question. How to manage a person of the Scrum team which often comes after the end of the daily stand-up? For now, the Scrum team starts on time, even if some people are missing. But it doesn't mean that it's perfect. So do you have some ideas or feedback on the situation? So what do you do with a person who is uh, constantly late to the meeting? Well, the answer, of course, is it depends. And it depends on what, uh, which of the three phases your team is currently in. And for each current phase, the actions that you might want to take as a team lead or as a scrum master are very different. So in the chaos stage, when the team doesn't have any time to learn, and you don't have time to grow people. Um, setting aside time to talk to a person um, and getting them to or giving them to understand slowly but surely what the best way to do something is, it may not be the best thing to do during chaos because during chaos your team has so many responsibilities that it doesn't have any time to do anything else. And your primary responsibility is to get the team out of chaos so that you can teach the team how to uh, solve problems themselves and eventually get them self-organized. So during chaos, as a team leader, I would essentially sit down with that team member and explain to them that it's unacceptable to not be in the team meetings because right now communication is key and in the context of chaos we cannot afford to have any team member not in full communication with the rest of the team. And he's either uh, and if it still continues, I would actually send an ultimatum. That person is either part of the team or they're not. Or I would eventually just send that person to be uh, in charge of something very, very different uh, until we can get out of chaos and I can mentor him in a more uh, in a more structured way. But right now, he's actually hurting the team get out of chaos. And that's a hole that needs to be plugged. That's the chaos situation, and a lot of people who hear this in the Agile circles may have a problem with it. And that, that's okay, because uh, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of teams are actually in chaos. But in the second stage, the learning phase, just got out of chaos, now your team has time to learn, there are several things I could do to mentor that person as a team leader or as a scrum master um, to uh, get better at the meeting-related stuff, or to understand that the meetings themselves are problematic. There are two sides to the situation. Let's start with assuming that the meetings are not the problem. And uh, I would actually talk to that person and give him a reason uh, to, to get better. I would sit them with them one-on-one -on -one and explain to them that uh, I expect them to always learn something new. And I would challenge them to get better at time management. Because that, it seems to be what is the current problem. And I would make sure that it is a time management problem. It could very well be that that person has a different problem that's actually preventing them from getting there on time. That's why it's important to sit down with a person on one-on-one -on -one and actually ask, why do they keep not making the meeting? Is there something personal at home? Is there something personal that's bugging them? Is there something that's physical that's preventing them from getting to that meeting? Uh, I would actually use the uh, uh, if I still didn't figure things out, I would use the uh, six forces uh, method, which I describe at fivewise.com, and I'll link to uh, below this video, uh, to understand why that person uh, is arriving into the meeting late most of the time. So, for example, personally, does he have the personal motivation to arrive into a meeting? Um, and personal motivation, you, to understand that, you have to talk to a person. You can't just manage someone and not talk to them. What about personal ability? Do they have the personal ability to be in that meeting? Maybe I'm just, I'm just let, let's assume that the meeting is always in a, uh, in a, in a wheelchair restricted area uh, and uh, that person is in a wheelchair. Is there, are they physically not able to get to the meeting on time because they have more physical stuff to go through? Um, uh, maybe they're not able to because they don't know how to manage their time and that's one of the personal ability stuff. So those are things we can work on. But socially there's also two facets. Is there a social motivation to arrive to the meeting late? 
or a lack of motivation to arrive to the meeting early. What's social motivation? Social motivation is uh, peer pressure um, or uh, power in numbers. For example, if you see other people doing the same thing you do, you feel more in tune with, uh, with what you're doing. Uh, what about social ability? That's the fourth uh, requirement to check. Uh, are they able to behave in this way and not be uh, confronted by any member of the group? And in most groups that's true. Uh, members tend to not confront any of the other members on the team on why they're getting somewhere late and they expect the team leader to solve that problem for them. Uh, and that's usually a sign of a non-self-organizing team where the team itself doesn't know how to confront people inside it not in a uh, not in a not by yelling but by actually talking one-on-one -on -one with people team member to team member so if that person keeps arriving late and no one of the team says anything to that person that's usually a sign that it's uh, so that's something you can take care of to change that behavior and that's by teaching the rest of the team how to behave uh, by challenging each other to personal responsibility and accountability and that's uh, that's something that's usually pretty hard to do in, on a few days basis but it could take a few months to get to that situation where that's actually happening. And the third phase is the uh, environment. Uh, does the environment uh, uh, give that person motivation to be late to a meeting or be early to a meeting? So are there rewards or punishments for being late or early to a meeting? For example, uh, maybe that person is part of another team on that company that works in the same time frames that forces him to get into uh, to the meeting you're in late. So he actually has, the environment is actually giving him motivation to be late because he's working on a project that maybe he is more senior at and he wants to be on that project more and he's praised by the company and maybe he gets even more money by being on that project. So he has rewards for being late. Um, so we can take care of that as well by changing meeting times. What about um, when you have uh, the environment that's actually preventing him physically from getting there? That's the steps part um, or where the meeting is very very far from where that person really is. So all these things can be taken into account during the learning phase and trying to understand why so a specific behavior is happening. And then we take care of all of these by actually addressing that person and addressing those needs in the company. Uh, I could also give that person, assuming that they want to get better in time management, let's say, and that's the real problem, I would actually give them some homework. For example, um, try not to be late at least three times this week. When you're late, send me an email why you were late, but not so I can punish you, just so we can understand what the reasons are. So I can be your guide, your buddy, to understand why things are happening the way they are. So that's the learning phase. You actually sit down with the person because you have time to do it and you mentor them to be better at something uh, than they were before. And on the third phase, that's a self-organizing team phase. That's the phase that most scrum teams assume that they're in, but they're really not. In a self-organized scrum team, the team leader or the scrum master should not need to do anything because everyone on the team will should be finding that person accountable and actually talking to that person um, uh, eventually and telling them that it's not acceptable that they keep missing the meeting or the team will group together and try to understand why that ha that that is happening on a self-organizing team the team assumes the role of the team leader there is no need for a team leader anymore only a mentor or a coach um, so as a scrum master or as a team leader uh, the point is to get the team to change something and if the team is not challenging that person then you need to find out what the constraints are for that behavior and your point as a team leader there is to get the team to get accountability for each and every one of its members. If you get that behavior, then your team can actually be self-organizing. Most teams are not. Uh, so, uh, a summary, it really depends on what phase your team is in uh, and on which steps you could take as a leader of a specific team. Uh, you can find out more at 5 of course.